Welcome to the Fit Strong Women Over 50 podcast, episode 106. Hi, I'm Jill. Thanks for joining us today. And I'm Chris. Jill and I are your co-hosts and the founding members of the Becoming Ellie community. The Becoming Ellie community is for women over 50 who are interested in being fit and strong. You can find out more about us at our website, becomingellie.com. And Ellie is spelled E-L-L-I. If you're wondering why we're called Becoming Ellie, once we learned that Ellie was the Norse goddess of aging who defeated Thor in a wrestling match, we knew we wanted to become like Ellie. Yes. Thinking about that story can be a good motivator. Hey, Jill, before I forget, we have a couple of shout outs to make. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So the first one is from a review on Apple Podcasts from, they have little nicknames. Her nickname is Future Famer 16. And she wrote, what an amazing podcast. I did some research and recommended this to an aunt of mine a few months back, and she has thanked me on multiple occasions for sending it to her. Just sent it over to my mom, who is nearing the age of 50 as well, and I'm hoping for her to receive the goodness and love that Jill and Chris are providing for their audience. Boy, I I felt great when I heard that. That that was just really super. Wow. And she must be pretty young. It's nice that she's think, look, looking out for her aunt and mother like that. That's right. That Yeah. At first I thought she was listening to it, but really it's her aunt and mother, but that's cool too. I mean, that's how yeah, people that's great. find podcasts. Somebody recommends it. Yeah. And then my next one is uh, from someone named 96 Nan. I have recently started following the Becoming LA podcast. It's so easy to get frustrated and feel defeated when you're on a health and fitness journey after the age of 50. This podcast has given me new perspective and positivity about what I am doing to be a better version of myself with each passing day. Love it. She says, thank you, Nan. Really appreciate that. Well, that's great. So there are a couple other ones here that I want to share. Great. The first one is from somebody called Fitness One, exclamation point, (laughs) (laughs) which I like. That's a good name. Yes. I'm so glad that I discovered this podcast three weeks ago. I've listened to every one of the shows within three weeks. Wow, that's a lot of listening. Oh, my gosh. And thoroughly enjoyed each one. Each podcast is full of great information for those of us that are 50 plus and into health and fitness. Actually, each show contains great information for people of all ages. I learn something new each time I listen to an episode. Great job, Chris and Jill. You know, I do tell people that when someone is maybe, I don't know, like in their 40s or whatever, or 30s, and they are looking for, we're still a good podcast, even if you're not over 50. I think there's lots of good information there. Sure, sure. And the my the spinal one is for the episode we did prior to this one, episode 105 with Karen Martell. She said, love the most recent interview with Karen Martell about hormonal imbalance. Would love more shows around this complicated topic. It is a complicated topic, and we yes. will try and find some more people to talk about it because it was... It's a, it's a mystery to many of us. So, yeah, but thank you. That was from Stacy M. That's great. Thank you, Stacy. Yeah. A couple of uh, other folks that I know have mentioned that it, we just put our toe in the water on that. And, you know, I, it, it's almost overwhelming trying to figure out where the problems lie when it comes to hormones. And so, you know, I, I find that it's real helpful when we have people on the show to talk about different things even though, you know, we're, we're definitely not doctors ourselves, nor do we <laughs> pretend to be, but, you know, we really appreciate the folks that leave those messages and reviews about our podcast. And uh, we love hearing from our listeners. So if you enjoy this podcast, please tell a friend. Most of you regular listeners know how often we talk about how important it is to do strength training. 
Yes, we talked about those episodes in our 100th episode, The Importance of Strength Training. Yeah, it was a compilation of a lot of different strength training quotes and things. But the second thing that I've noticed was how often people recommend we eat more protein as we get older. And I understand that getting between 15 to 25% of the calories from protein is important. Is, Is that the number that you're thinking of too, Jill? I actually thought it was a little higher. I yeah. thought we were supposed to get maybe 30, 35%. I think it probably depends on what you need, but yeah, it's like one of those things that you probably need to start somewhere and then adjust as you go. Yeah. I don't know that we've talked about before, but an easy way to find out how much protein you eat is enter your things into my fitness pal, which is a free app on the phone and take a look at the macros and it'll tell you the percents. You know, I I think I actually aim for closer to 30%. Again, we're not doctors and everyone's different. There's calculations you can do based on your weight and how, what the percentage of protein is like, Right. and you can sort of do some calculations that way. And the other nice, so the nice thing about if you use my fitness pal or some of the other Um, trackers, food trackers, is you can specify what percentage you want, you know, what your goals are macro wise. Yeah, yeah. And then you can sort of see that as you enter your food, if you're hitting your goals, then sort of judge how you feel. And if Uh you're doing what you are wanting to do, whether you're trying to lose weight, gain weight, stay the same, maintain weight, right, you just adjust it from there. And everyone metabolizes things differently too. So sometimes you can take a lot of something in, but it doesn't really stick with you, if you know what I mean. Right. And the protein that you need when you turn 50 might be Mm -hmm. different than the protein you need when you are turning 65. Exactly. So at any rate, figure that out. And there's lots of information online about how much protein to get. And I do think it varies from person to person. Yeah. But we do need protein for a number of reasons. But the main one is that we tend to lose muscle as we age. And we need that protein to help keep our muscles intact, or even to increase our muscle. I know I have a really hard time getting in enough protein, even though I think I eat a fair amount of it, but it's still a struggle at times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Besides muscle, we need protein for bones. And particularly after menopause, people haven't, women have an increased risk for osteoporosis. I know that when I'm eating enough protein, it helps with metabolism and keeping off the weight as well. And obviously, if I eat bad carbs, my carb (laughs) percentage goes up and uh, there's not enough room in my stomach for protein. (laughs) It's so important. Yeah, the protein, if you get your protein in, it makes it a little easier to avoid those sweet or those simple carbs. Yes. And I do know that once you start eating simple carbs, it becomes harder and harder to avoid them as you go. So changing your focus to protein and complex carbs. (laughs) I just thought of something else too. Um, You know, there's people that say, oh, I don't want to eat too much protein because it's tough on my kidneys. And again, we're not doctors, but if you have healthy kidneys, that typically is not a problem. But if you don't have healthy kidneys, you know, this is something else that, you know, you talk to your doctor about, but just wanted to add that caveat. So everyone who needs, again, just like you have to figure out what your body needs for protein, right? It's sort of your health and What's right your own you. issues dictate some of this too. Exactly. Anyway, we thought that we'd dedicate this episode to all things protein and have come up with a series of tips with getting more protein into your day. I know I am always looking for more ways to be a bit more creative with getting in that protein. I'll go ahead and start with my first uh, way that I try to sneak protein in. Okay. This seems like a no brainer. So that's why I'm starting with this one first. But when I do meal prep, I like to pull out my crock pot and get some chicken, whether it's fresh or frozen and cook five servings in the crock pot. Usually I just use a little lemon juice or maybe some olive oil. And I let that just, you know, it's so easy. I just throw it in the crock pot and let it go. So when it's finished hours later, I can package those into single servings or double servings, either freeze some, put some in the fridge in individual containers. And that way, when I'm hungry during the week, I don't know what I want to eat. I don't have time to really cook. 
I can always pull out some chicken that I've already taken care of and prepared. You know, you can add all kinds of things to it, like a salsa, you know, make it Italian or make it into um, some sort of casserole or add it to your salad or I don't know. I just find having it already pre-made is a big start in my meal. This winter when I was, you know, I like to eat soup in the wintertime, but you made me think of this. I would have pre-cooked chicken in the refrigerator and then I would bought these organic fancy ramen noodles at Costco. Oh, I'd get some chicken broth, throw the, cook the ramen, throw a bunch of vegetables into the broth. And then I had the pre-cooked chicken. And so I would just throw a bunch of chicken in there too, pour all over the noodles and maybe add some, you know, ginger, garlic, whatever spices. And it was a great lunch. Yeah. Having the pre, you know, like if you have to, it's not that right. it takes long to cook chicken and soup, but having it already cooked is such a, makes it so much easier. Yeah. So I love that tip, Chris. I sometimes use my Instapot to pre-cook the chicken. Yeah. That's another good idea. I could throw it in the Instapot. Yes. So either one works, but the right. Instapot is a little faster. As far as meal prep goes, my second tip is make a meal plan for the week. And when you're doing that, Put your protein in first so that you identify what protein you're going to eat at each meal and then add your carbs and fats around it. So if you know what, what how much food you want to eat, if, especially if you're like tracking macros or calories or whatever, it's easy to say, okay, I'm going to have chicken with dinner. That gives me this. And so around that, I'm going to have my sweet potato and salad and olive oil or whatever. Yep. Put the protein in there first. It makes it a little easier. So when you do meal planning, do you actually plan all 21 meals for the week? You know, I tend to eat the same thing for breakfast and lunch a lot. Or if I make, if I'm actually being organized and I make dinner, and since I live alone, I tend to have a lot of leftovers. So I'll eat that. I eat that for lunch. So yeah, you kind of have it all figured out. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess in a way I do, but my all 21 meals. So, you know, sometimes when you look in these diet websites and books and things, they give you these meal plans with like every day is a different breakfast and every day is a different lunch. I don't live like that. I don't either. So my breakfast tends to be, I mean, I do vary it occasionally, but it tends to be once I'm on a breakfast kick, that's what I eat for a good while. And same thing with lunch. I tend to eat the same things. And then dinner is more of my, let's be a little more creative. I probably rotate through three or four lunches and dinners, mm, maybe there's 10. <laughs> you know, I, I really don't have a big range of things, but that's that's interesting because I don't plan out my 21 meals, but I buy various uh, proteins that, you know, my basics kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I sort of know what I eat for breakfast and I sort of know what I eat for lunch. Yeah. And it's when I don't have those things in my house and I don't have chicken already cooked or whatever Mm -hmm. that I tend to go astray. Yeah. Well, my next tip, tip number three, I guess it is, is actually a carb that has a ton of protein in it. And that's quinoa. And I didn't even know what quinoa was till about 10 or 11 years ago when I really started, or whatever it was, 2007. I guess that's more than 10 and 11 years. But, you know, a friend of mine had quinoa in a salad and I'm like, what is that? And I learned about it. And the more I learned about it and the more I've tried it, I really like it a lot because it's a tiny little seed actually that has, I think, 20 grams in a serving of protein, which is amazing. And you can add it to things, kind of sneak it in there. So you sneak in your protein without realizing it, whether it's a salad or a soup. Um, Some people have it as a side and maybe just add a few things to it, like some uh, dried cranberries and chopped up walnuts. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. And I've seen it on more and more menus too, when I go to restaurants. So quinoa, it, it looks like quinoa. If you're not familiar with it, try it. I mean, it's sort of like cooking like rice, you know, two cups of water to one cup of quinoa and keep it, the cover, the lid on it for like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes and stir it a few times and take it off the heat. <laughs> it's pretty easy to make, Voila. make a whole <laughs> big batch of it at once and then throw it into different things. And it, 
it disappears. So Oh, so you have a big batch of quinoa and a big batch of chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to go. Yeah. It just, because you can add so many other flavors and things to it. It's not like you're eating the same thing all the time, but right. it just makes it so easy when you're having one of those stressful weeks where there's too much to do and no time to cook. Yes. So that brings up something. So we're talking about all this protein and we haven't really talked about sources of protein. Oh, okay. You know, protein comes from, we tend to think of protein as coming from meat, seafood, dairy products, eggs, so those are sort of animal products tend to be what are, we think of as our main source of protein. But you just made me think of with quinoa that there's plenty of sources of protein from plants too. Quinoa is an, is an obvious one, but you can also get protein from some of the traditional soy products, tofu, tempeh, those kinds of things. You could also get processed soy protein products, but I tend to not eat those, but there are like, you know, fake meat and things made from soy with protein in them, but those are a little weird sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But, well, could because they are still processed foods, even though they're made from soy. Anyway, that's a source. Lentils, beans, chickpeas, yep. nuts are all peanut butter, all have protein in them and are plant-based. Peas have protein in them too. i I don't know how much, but I know yeah. peas have protein. Yeah, when when you add all the different vegetable proteins together, you're act, or, you know you're getting the benefits of all the fiber in vegetables and the vitamins plus some protein. It made me think when you just said that was my next tip is about my salad that I love to make, and I often have a big batch of this in the refrigerator too for the week, and that is I call it my no panic potluck salad. And, Probably everyone's sick of seeing me offer that as up as a recipe, but it's it's so easy to vary it and make it different all the time. And so not just chopped up vegetables with, you know, celery, peppers, carrots, onions, cabbage, what have you. But I, I like to put in that, of course, some quinoa, some kidney beans, or maybe chickpeas, Sometimes if I'm really feeling adventuresome, black beans, although they tend to kind of color the salad, so you might want to watch out. But I'll sometimes add tuna to that as well. And that just really bumps up. So it's really a protein salad by the time you're done with it, if you have all those different proteins added to it. Yeah, if you have quinoa, chickpeas, or beans of some kind, mm -hmm. and tuna, yeah, that's a lot of protein. It's a lot of protein. If you use, like I do, I use um, olive oil, and then you have a healthy fat, you have your protein, and you have healthy carbs as well. Wow, that's great. This is something I hadn't thought of, but since you brought up tuna, the other thing that comes in a can are sardines. Yes. And sardines are supposed to be really good for us because of the fat content in sardines, but they also are a great source of protein. Yeah. I haven't had sardines in a while. I'm going to add that to my shopping list because I, I happen to love sardines. I didn't always, but it's kind of an acquired taste. After a while, I really like them. Yeah. Sardines. I know we have a couple, we have a few recipes on the Becoming Ellie website for sardines. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Like a sardine salad and I'm not sure what else, but also if you make tuna salads, you can mix in a, one can of tuna, one can of sardines and go on your way with your salad. Yeah. I have no idea what number of tip we're on. I think if we count sardines as number <laughs> six, you can go ahead here with number seven. Okay. Eat protein first at your meal. That way you get it in and protein tends to fill us up. So you make sure you get your protein in before you eat your other, your carbs and whatever. Yeah, that's a good one. Don't fill up on rice. <laughs> or what have you. Yeah, well, and you know, when you go to a restaurant, they plop that bread bowl down and then you're eating your bread right. and then your dinner comes, you're like, yeah, you just sort of pick at the yeah. food. Or they have those chips with the salsa or whatever. I mean, there's, there's always like this fill it up appetizer that yeah. <laughs> isn't protein typically. <laughs> no, right, no one plops down a bowl of protein for you yeah. to snack on. Well, this one's a little different. I love dairy. I know some people avoid dairy, but the one that I love that's a, a pro very strong protein is a Greek yogurt that I've always had trouble pronouncing. And I understand that it's not F-A-G-E like Fage or Faye. 
Faye. Am I saying that right, Jill? I think so. Faye. I think that's what it's called, but it's spelled F-A-G-E. Yes. And I think the stress is on the first syllable. So Faye or Faye. Faye. Well, regardless, it, there's a zero fat version that only has five grams of sugar, but 18 grams of protein. And to me, I don't know, Greek yogurt is delicious. You know, if I put a little bit of nuts and some fruit in there, I love it. Plain. Yeah. Plain, plain. Thank you. That's one of my favorite breakfasts, a serving of plain Greek yogurt Mm -hmm. with maybe some berries on it, raspberries or blueberries. Yes. And uh, I used to have like a sort of grain-free granola I would sprinkle on top yep. of that yep. or some something yep. is good on there. Yeah. And it has like some, some healthy uh, active yogurt cultures, you know, like probiotic kind of stuff in it. Another good reason to eat it if, you know, if you're a dairy eater. Yes. Plain Greek yogurt. Well, and that brings up my other, one of my tips, eat protein at breakfast. And I know we've said we have protein all the time, but So instead of eating cereal, eat things like the Greek yogurt or eggs. Oh, I've seen some great quinoa recipes for breakfast quinoa. You make it with like some coconut milk and or coconut flakes. And rather than more of a savory, it's a, I don't even want to say sweet, but. Well, you could even stir it in with oatmeal. And like I said, this, the quinoa kind of disappears. It's so tiny, (laughs) you know, but anyway, make sure you get protein at breakfast. Yeah. That's a good one. My next tip involves protein powder. And this is kind of a big subject. I, for a long time, I use something called EAS whey powder, but I've really branched out into some other kinds. And I've asked online, you know, what people use in a couple of the different Facebook groups that I'm in as well. And something came up that you said you've used before. It's called Orgain protein? Orgain. Yeah. Orgain. O-R-G-A-I-N. Yes. And I know that that's available both on Amazon and Costco and it's dairy free, soy free, and it has probiotics. It's a plant-based protein. Yes. And it's organic. Yeah. How did it taste? You know, protein powders have, can have pretty strong flavor. It was, I like it. I used it always in like smoothies or whatever, but I had no problem with using or gain. Yeah. I had a functional medicine doctor recommend it to me one time. That's what got me started on using it. They do have different flavors, but I either had chocolate or vanilla. Yeah. And I liked both of those. And do you make a smoothie with it? Like with uh, berries and water, Greek yogurt? Yeah. So I tend to make a smoothie with, I usually put in my smoothie, I end up at with, I put vegetables in there. I might put a carrot. I might put some cucumber. I might put spinach or kale or some sort of green thing. And then I usually put berries. And if I have Greek yogurt, I might use that. Uh Otherwise I use some kind of liquid. Maybe um, I put green tea in it sometimes, or if I have like a juice that I, I for a while had like pomegranate juice in the house. I see. I would throw that in there too. Yeah. And then the protein powder. So it was sort of a mixture of, it was, you know, people talk about green smoothies. Mine was often not the most attractive looking thing. <laughs> it was the kitchen sink. <laughs> well, you and, throw raspberries in and yeah. chocolate powder and whatever. It does not come Cho- out green. Chocolate comes out chocolate. Yeah. 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 So, but almost always I liked what I got from it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people use it as creamer in their coffee. Yeah, that was what I was going to say is a good pre-workout drink is coffee, mixed coffee with the protein powder. Yeah. You can throw it in your blender, mix it all up. It's like this latte thing. Coffee mocha. Yeah. Coffee mocha. Yeah. With protein powder. Yeah. And it's quick and easy. There are lots of things you could do with protein powder besides make smoothies. Do you bake with it? You can. You can make all kinds of things with protein powder. People use it instead of putting sweetener in things, they use protein powder. Mm. I guess if you used vanilla too, it wouldn't really change the color. Right. I've seen people make sort of like fake ice creams and they use bananas, frozen bananas. bananas. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> that and well, you can throw some protein powder in there too. Right. That's what I do. Yeah. Yep. So lots of different things you can do with protein powder. And that's probably 
Well, that would be a good blog post to some of the different recipe ideas for protein powders. Yeah, that'd be great. I know at one point we were talking about protein powders or not protein powders, but protein bars. Oh yeah. Remember our episode? I don't even know when that was, but a couple of years, years ago where yeah. we test tested a bunch of protein bars. It, it was so long ago, Jill, it was episode number 38. Wow. And we're at 106 right now. So yeah, yeah it was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Jill and I sat down, we, we tried all these protein bars right live on the, on the microphone, right? Yeah. There's probably been a few new ones since we did that. Yeah. I'll have to link to that in the show notes for this too, for someone who's interested in getting more protein with their protein bars. Yeah. I don't eat a lot of protein bars, but they are useful if you are doing things and you need a quick protein before or after a workout. Right. And also like with the powders that you were talking about, I've bought like pre-made muscle milk, mm. which is a little protein. It's already made probably not, so not, but like a protein I just, shake kind of thing. Yeah. Like a protein shake. And it comes in a little, like remember little milk or juice boxes for yes. your kids. Those little, <laughs> it's like that. They're like little juice boxes full of uh, for protein no. <laughs> shakes. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I wouldn't give them to a kid. You don't have to um, refrigerate those, do you? The no, milk. no, they sit in a That's box kind of in my garage and I grab them on my way. Like sometimes if I know I'm leaving the gym yeah. and I'm going somewhere else, I'm not coming home and I know I haven't really eaten a whole lot. Right. I will throw that in the car so that I have something yep. after my workout and it has the protein. I don't know. It just sort of works for me. Right. There's many days I leave the house and I'm not sure, you know, if I leave the house at 10 in the morning to go to a client and then I have appointments and other meetings, I might not get home until six or seven. And it's nice to always have something in the car and a protein bar really makes sense, you know, to just get me over past. So I drive by those fast food places because nothing calls to me more than when I'm hungry and there's a fast food. And I don't know why my mind goes there, but I, I just really don't want to pull in and having something available. That's a better choice is always good. <laughs> well, one of my tips was to include protein in any snacks and that can be challenging. Uh, you know, I said, if you have an apple, have a handful of nuts with it or whatever, but you know, cheese sticks were. Yeah. Well, peanut, peanut butter with an apple, you know, there's sort of things that it's like, yeah, rice and beans, they go together. That's not a snack, but. Well, right. But they didn't get things like little bags of sunflower seeds and seeds have protein in them. Seeds. I don't know if that we mentioned that. Yeah. Well, quinoa is a seed, but I don't. I don't think of it as a seed, but you're right. Yeah. So besides not seeds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, those all have protein in them. Well, I think that we have covered a lot of tips. <laughs> I think we have up to 12 if I've counted correctly. And I'm sure that there's plenty of other things. We all struggle with uh, trying to come up with ways to eat more protein, but I think these gave us a pretty good list of ideas. Yeah, I think so. I know we probably forgot some things or just didn't think of some. And I, I'd love to hear with some of our listeners. I know you have a good idea if you're listening and please send that in on, you know, on an email or you no, know, we'd love to hear your ideas too. Yes. Yeah, so if you're listening and you have some ideas for us, please share them. You can post the idea on the Becoming Ellie website or any of our social media sites. We are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Our user ID is on all of those sites is Becoming Ellie. We also have a private Facebook group that I hope you'll join. We'd love to hear what you've been doing, and it's a great place to share and get inspired. So we did all those, read those reviews at the beginning of the episode. And so feel free to write a review of the podcast if you like. But if you really want to help us out, just tell a friend or family member about our podcast podcast. That's really helpful. Well, do you feel like you'll be able to eat enough protein now, Jill? <laughs> <laughs> I might be eating too much protein now, but <laughs> yeah, we came up with some really good ideas, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah. Well, it's been good talking with you, Jill. See you next time on the Fit Strong Women Over 50 podcast. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.